to the struggle for the liberation of Namibia started a long way at the times of Madumea Demfayo, Ipumbuya Shirongo, uh, Maharero, Ventboe. Those are our traditional leaders who resisted against foreign invaders. I wanted to be a lawyer, but I decided uh, my father, my grandfather was a fighter and he was hoping that we should continue to fight until we liberate our country. So I'm not going to go for law, I will go for military training. So the new generation uh, of us just follow in the footsteps of our, our heroes and heroines who fought against Germany invaders and the Boers invaders. The commander-in-chief was the founding father and the army commander was Topias Hainyeko. Mzeko uh, Okungwa, chief political commissar. And myself, first deputy political commissar. And uh, Joseph Mutongo Lume, Depu uh, second deputy, Mutongo Lume, second deputy, and then followed by other people like uh, Shipwahura, uh, was a disciplinary commander, uh, and so on. We did not uh, uh, only help political rallies, but we did also wage a psychological warfare. For instance, uh, we bought this uh, spray paint and then we went into the main roads spraying slogans on the tar roads, on the uh, road signs. A uh, plan was here. And, and Wolf is by, on the road to Wolf is by, we spread the plan is here, we are here. And then at night, we did this at night. And then later on, we Leave that, we changed to another tactic. We used to go now to the public telephone booth and we phoned the uh, police station from the, uh, the booth, pretending to be a white, uh, white man. You see, telling them, yeah, yes, I have seen a, a couple of covers with weapons crossing the road. When the police asked, where? I say about uh, 20 kilos or uh, 30 kilos from Otavi, uh, I'm phoning from Oshuarongo. Now they will, they say that they must run that side. And then some of us must ride to that side, the drivers, and to see where are they. And then when we see that, then we conduct the other side. Then at the same time, we phone maybe uh, a vendor police station, telling them that. Uh, Black covers with weapons across the road here between Okahanja and... So they have to run that side. So that is another uh, tactic we used. This Pohamba, this Evald Kashivena is in Sweden. I can't remember this name. Here is me. Mm -hmm. 1964. 1964. Where? Eh? In Dar es Salaam? It's written here, where is it? 64. 1964. Where, in where? where are you? In Dar es here I am. Uh, 19 in Dar es Salaam. And when you come here, this is Mze Kaukungwa. This is Nuyoma. And this is Pohamba. I mean, Topia Sainyeko. See? And this is Shukunguleni, the one, remember that, but he was the deputy leader at Hungulumbashi. Uh, Whenever we are resting or sleeping, one is awake. And I was the first, and the second is my friend. And uh, then he said, uh, hey, the boys have come. Then we stood up 
but there is a sort of, a, I don't know what, sort of hillish sense and so on. So the, it was on top. Then we decided that let's run this way. If they follow us here, then we can go back to our, uh, uh, where we had our guns and so on. And as we, but by then they have seen us as we stood up and they decided to sort of encircle us. And as we are running, and uh, my friend was in front and the boy was in between me and them, I mean, and him. So, and uh, when I was about to take my hand grenade and as I jump on to throw, I was shot here. It's only that a lot of clothing is all. The plate went through the this and hot shoulder fingers and so on. And it hit the ribs and it went through. But the ribs uh, punctured the lungs and all the type of things and so on. So I could not move even. So it's where they captured me there. I myself was arrested <coughs> in, in 1976, in October 8, I think, yeah. And I was detained here in Oshuarumba for a couple of days. And later I was taken to, to change others. I was detained there. As you know, when you are detained by these guys, we have to be polished. Yeah, that's all shot and asked a lot of questions, there's all lot of nonsense. And later on, <coughs> I together with, uh, <coughs> excuse me please, like Comrade the late Ruben Itengula, late Comrade Michael de Chicongo, were taken, because we were arrested together, were taken to Vendup for the, for, for the trial. There we met the Ulenga in prison there because he was arrest, not arrested with us. But we were tried together. <coughs> and in 1977, she was in July on the 24th of July. We were taken to, to Leoko prison in South Africa, outside Johannesburg. There we spent uh, one month there. And from there we were taken to Robben Island by by route from uh, from that prison, uh, local prison. They took me to Rundu. Um, I don't know for how many days, but then they took me to because uh, what happened is that first of all the a certain uh, Chihiro speaking uh, policeman said that I was who? It was uh, Ismail Kasenda. He passed away when I was here. But by that time, Ismail was in America. And I'm sure when this news went there, they were also surprised. Uh, why uh, Swano man and in America and now he's here? What happened? So they wanted to make sure that perhaps to get information. So they did our, their best to uh, uh, make me to, not to die perhaps or something like that and uh, but later the boy who came to fetch me from Victoria came with the uh, plain uh, fighters who we, with whom we were we are now working with them then they said no it's not uh, that man is who and who is me and they knew that I was a Deputy Chief uh, Political Commissioner and other things. So to them, the, the boss, it was also a uh, good thing that they can capture uh, someone who says the higher danger and So they rushed me to Pretoria and I got another operation. And, uh, and I think that operation was also on the 15th of December uh, 1968. And uh, so I stayed there for I uh, meant for two years and then they brought me back to Namibia and uh, I arrived in Namibia on the 17th of July 1970 and uh, I was sort of, uh, I was not detained but it was sort of house arrest or the type of things. When we were brought in Vendu, 
some uh, puppets of the so-called uh, interim government wanted to talk to Kubriti Toivo. I don't know why they wanted to talk to him. So the three of us, that is me, myself, Comrade Biva, and Comrade Marius Amagulu, we objected for Comrade uh, Toivo to, to meet those puppets of the, the so-called interim government, you know? So we protested, we said, he is not going to see those guys. So that's why the boss said that. So we were supposed to, to be released together with Comrade uh, Toivo, you know? So they said, no, this uh, is, is no harikat. So we were kept in the window. So we didn't get any, any remission. So we were kept in the window until we finished our sentence fully. The difference between land fighters, so land fighters and the South African soldiers. So the, the South African soldiers, they were just fighting because they are even paid. They are getting money. They recruited, they, yeah, you can come and go and they fight the guerrillas of Swapo, we will pay you this. For us, we were not like that. For us, we are given a political conviction. You have to give a political conviction to the soldiers, to the plan fighters. Mm -hmm. I want Mehmet to tell us about uh, that attack. Yeah. The, the attack, attack in Ashatoto. Uh, how was it? Um, they came with uh, how many jets? Was it bumping or they came on the ground or um, that morning? That the... morning, can say somewhere on foot. They came on foot. I think somewhere on foot because they were the shooting of the small guns also we could do. see that there were small guns, but maybe those ones who were on foot there were not many. Only the plane which came to attack in the morning, early in the morning while we were sleeping. But we could see that there were. The shooting was we were put, uh, cross shooting. They were shooting. We were shooting. Really? That was on Saturday. So you know how to shoot? <laughs> yes, no I was. I was trained on that. Yeah, I know yeah. it. Okay. You, if you bring it here, any well, what, type what of gun. What type of gun were you using? The AK-47. My first battle it was uh, 1980. 81 in, Jan in, in, in January there, at the, uh, the base called um, Nambaratu. I need to forget it. Then I was a gunner, firing that rocket. And uh, my speed was too fast because I am young than the elders. I was speeding. Uh, <clears throat> So it, 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 I enjoyed the battle, the first battle, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I forget the base, I mean. Think about it. Uh, yeah. We want the we want that uh, base, uh, yeah. In Ombalanto. Yeah, in Ombalanto, yeah, closer yeah. to the border, the border. Yeah. 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 Closer to the border. Oh. No, base, uh, yeah. On a base, on a Didi. On a? On a Didi. Yeah, yeah, on a Didi, yeah, the base is on a Didi. Imagine now, South Africa was having a lot of sophisticated weaponry. We were just using AK-47, eh? bazooka, eh? machine gun, and even Pepecha. Pepecha, that is the strongest gun. Pepecha is the first gun that was used in the, in the liberation struggle by Swapo. The first one? The first gun, the Pesa, is, is a, that one is a, it kills a sixth cartridge. But it looks like a, it's a, uh, how do you call it? Out, outdated. But that time, <laughs> it was sophisticated because it, the Pesa, that is made in, I think in the Russian. Eh? The first I saw the, 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 the first South African op operation, they took operation, the very big one, 
which was uh, destroying uh, this town of Shangongo and uh, that bridge, long bridge of Shangongo. The first time I saw that big operation, it was very heavy. That was the situation that is pushing us from the Umbaja here to cross the border to this to go into that area of uh, Wankumbi, Wadimba, that site. Although we were there in 1983, the South Africa starting following us that side. We enjoy now the, 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 the fighting with this rifle rather, rather than the ranging. It was nice. Yeah, if I happen to, to, to stay without two days without fighting, I'm angry. Yeah, you see, I'm angry. I was having people, we were having so moral. Our commander at that time is we have we are having a commander uh, general now is a, gen, a retired general for artillery uh, general Cambuela uh, Pet Cambuela yeah uh, Petrus and Nipandura Cambuela Ngirukiro not Nipandura Ngirukiro not Nipandura Ngirukiro Cambuela is the chief of artillery we enjoying the war. The Pikila Mushitumba. Pita to Kuhuna to Kuhuna, she took care for a poor catches, or Tigo Guyamo, who came on and the Guyapo Pongudi Hori. I thought I'd take a ponoka come back on the Kanagi Pokati Pongudi Hori no catches. They were a cat, were a cat, were a cat. A commander waiting to Gashuku, quite a man. I remember the jet to be We prepare for the war of liberation. We had a Strela 2 missile. A missile that's as big as this. And this missile. You allow the enemy jet to pass and you fire behind it and the missile will follow until it chop down the enemy plane. The mirages, they were afraid. We nearly to shoot them because they took only maybe five or three minutes. They, they went. Then they were <laughs> propagating. Ah, we destroyed the big uh, uh, missile base of Swampo, <laughs> which is not true. So the enemy then was confronted with a situation where they have to, to talk to Swapo. They were told even by their imperial supporters that talk to Swapo as the British talk to the Kenyans in Mau Mau and uh, the elsewhere. So we were able to confront them uh, politically, militarily and uh, diplomatically. So we met in Geneva and uh, they wanted to play a trick there, so we were brought in by the UN and the South African were sitting already. And when you, the secretary who called us, who came to fetch us at our hotel, took us in the middle of the, of the, of the, of the hall. It was a big hall, the hall of, that of the League of Nations. So when we went in, we she just brought us in the middle of the, of the, of the big hall and then we look around, she disappeared and uh, look around, there was no seat reserved for Swapa delegation. So I look around, I see a South African was, a delegation was already sitting at the microphone ready to talk. I just went and catch him at the neck, threw him on the ground and I make him a statement and uh, after completing my statement, our female comrades start to say, hey, 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 oh, we look at the statement and then we, we won. The diplomatic battle. So the armed struggle strengthened the, 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 the political situation. So we reached also three pronged strategy political, outside, uh, inside in Namibia, that the Namibian people have to know that the independence of, the country, of their country is their responsibility. They have to make a sacrifice. 
Secondary is to mobilize the international community. Thirdly is the armed liberation struggle, which we never shared views with anybody else except ourselves. And nobody knew that we have a strain or two missile. So this is how we, we defeated the enemy and, and win genuine freedom and independence, which we are enjoying today. Are we doing enough to remember the, the blood that waters this freedom? Yeah, partly we are, but partly not, because we are not recognizing all the heroes, especially those ones we left in Oshatota. In which category are they put on the 26? What do you mean? You never, you never hear anything about Oshatota attack. And if I, maybe it, they used to say it in, in their speeches, but I never heard it. Maybe well, I, why do you think Shatoto was special? It's not special, uh -huh. but it, it was also attacked by the South African armies. For example, when we commemorate the Okashinga Day, uh -huh. why can't we also put Shatoto in Kashinga? Because Shatoto, people also died there, although they are not hundreds, but people also died there. At least we can also accommodate them in, uh, in Kashinga. So when we are talking of Kasinga Day, then we can also, not to say that uh, to put Shadotua on its day, but just to say we are, we are remembering all of them, even those ones who were you know, Shadotua. I mean, when you die again, you know, oh, 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 I would like to say it. I, 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 don't, I do not. It's good that, like the veterans, to be recognized and be seen and uh, in a way that uh, those are veterans, but only not to be paraded, but something better should be done after. Or during the years and so on. Not only to be seen on there and only perhaps the president to see them and so on, because they are some people, and you are from Oshuarongo, there are people I have been talking to the regional office of the Veterans Affairs and the so called uh, psychologist or a social worker, but there are people who are suffering in Okagarara. You see, and with some we have to force them. So, literally, mm. literally what you are saying mm. is. The war veterans hmm. should be given special attention. That's right. No, it is very important to, to mention this in historical days so that the, the, the new generation will remember that the struggle started by our forefathers and mothers did not start today. It started a long, long time ago. That's why I have to mention the Mahareros, the Veti Boys, the Madume Adenfayo, Ipumbuya Shirongo, and the rest of them. We want also the future generation of our country to continue to celebrate the remembrance of the heroes and heroines of our country. We must never, never forget where we came from and where we go, how we got to this uh, freedom we are celebrating today. And I would like to tell our people that this thing of, of, of uh, division among ourselves, fighting unnecessarily for positions and that kind of, uh, of stuff. We should drop that kind of thing. We should hold together our hands and stand together as one, speaking with one voice, protecting the freedom which we got in such a, I mean, Hard way. 
The youth I don't want to hear about fighting for the country. For them, yeah, you fought for it, and that was that. But anyway, I think the youth are just angry because of employment. If there was employment that could be given to all the youth, they finish their studies and they don't come and sit at their parents' homes just to wait for pap to be cooked in the kitchen. Maybe it could have changed something, maybe the minds of the youth. But now, if this is a country where there is no employment, I go with the youth. Now, the judges and responsibility or the new generation of Namibia is to start hard from kindergarten, primary school, secondary school, up to the university level, which we have created. UNAM is there for you. We want more scientists, more engineers, which can start at the University of Namibia.